George Herbert Walker Bush, former ambassador to the UN and former head of the CIA, takes the presidential oath of office, a public event. But unseen by most observers is the Bible he uses to be sworn in. It's a strange volume, illustrated with the symbolism of the world's oldest and most influential fraternity, a secretive society called the Freemasons. This same Bible was used to swear in America's first president, George Washington, a Freemason. He would not be the last. In the United States, 14 of our presidents have been Freemasons. They include Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Gerald Ford, and Harry Truman, a Masonic Grand Master, and the man who established the UN and the CIA. Some say this is coincidence, but others claim it's evidence of a shadow government controlled by the Freemasons. It's a society of secrets. Uh, they're not very open uh, about what they stand for. Certainly for the last 40 years in, in this country, an absolute dream for conspiracy theorists. For at least three centuries, their members have played a dominant role in business, science, literature, and politics. From Napoleon Bonaparte, to Winston Churchill, to King Edward VIII. Most of the time, when people try to describe what Freemasonry is, they have a hard time doing it. And so what they end up doing is falling back on telling you people who have been members. And then you say, well, you know, Ben Franklin was a Mason, or George Washington was a Mason. Even as Mozart composed his Masonic opera, The Magic Flute, a French physician named Guillotine invented a killing machine that symbolized the French Revolution, which some claim the Masons started. As the Wright brothers took flight, Masons named Chrysler, Olds, and Ford established the auto industry. Colt and Gatling modernized war's most terrible weapons. And Freemasons took control of the movies, led by Louis B. Mayer at MGM, Jack Warner at Warner Brothers, and Daryl Zanuck at 20th Century Fox. Masonic superstars include Clark Gable and John Wayne, Harry Houdini and Mel Blanc, the voice of Bugs Bunny, Abbott, but not Costello. Sports heroes like Ty Cobb and Arnold Palmer, even famous names like Buzz Aldrin, and Wendy's founder, Dave Thomas. But who are they? What do they do? And how did they achieve such power? What they did was they developed um, an, another layer, a secret layer um, of organization that no other trade had. And in that sense, they stood out by being different, by being um, secretive, if you like. They traffic in weird icons and secret rituals. People are naturally suspicious any time influential people or groups of people are meeting in relative secrecy. Some assert they're an ancient order empowered by occult knowledge. Many fear their bizarre initiations indoctrinate new members into a sinister cult. And their ritual reenactments of an ancient murder have some suggesting they are a ruthless conclave willing to kill to protect their secrets and their plans for a new world order. In almost every mysterious and controversial event, from Jack the Ripper to the assassination of John F. Kennedy, you can, if you look hard enough, find Masonic involvement. What is the secret? See, that's what they don't want to talk about. There's nothing wrong with secrets. We know who killed JFK. We know what happened at Area 51. Don't ask. Those conspiracy theories have been out there for a long time. Uh, I think part of it is the fact that we've never been out front and open about what we're doing. Today, 
Most major cities are home to a Masonic Lodge, ornate temples closed to outsiders and open to suspicion. I think the feeling on the part of the general public is that there are secrets that we're keeping from them that are making us superior to them. Masonic legends suggest a grand saga that stretches far into the past. Freemasons have, over the years, claimed that their body goes back to Solomon's Temple, or even to the beginning of the world. Um, that it's that these Masonic rituals, you know, in some cases were created by God. What is the truth behind these fantastic claims? What is the fact, and what is the fiction? Freemasonry was practiced by many of America's founders, but some believe they are behind many horrifying crimes. There is the 1982 hanging of an Italian banker with links to the Vatican. There is the 2004 shooting death of a Mason during an initiation rite in New York. There are even wild claims that the killing spree of Jack the Ripper was a Masonic plot. We will penetrate the marble walls of the Masonic Lodge. We'll witness rituals never before seen by outsiders. We'll discover the forbidden password of the third degree. And we reveal the true purpose of the Masonic Creed. In most countries, the people who are in power, mostly they are Freemasons. For some reason, that's how it happened. It happened in the United States, in, in England, and you know, all over the world. How did Masonry gain such prominence? What goes on within these lavish temples in London? New York, Philadelphia, or Washington, D.C.? Freemasons have no central authority. Each lodge is independent, yet they are seen by many as part of a global organization. The privacy of Masonic meetings led the people to think that here is a secret government within our government, that we're really not uh, running our own affairs, but we're being manipulated by powers behind the throne. The conspiracy theory you find most attractive says something quite deep-seated about your underlying worldview. Are the Freemasons the most powerful men alive? Or are these just paranoid fantasies? Does their craft go back to biblical times? And do they possess ancient secrets? The questions have been raised. The answers are not what you'd expect. And they begin with an event that has thrust popular fears of a Masonic conspiracy into the international spotlight. The trail of clues begins with a murder. London's Blackfriars Bridge. The scene of a crime that would put the Freemasons in the crosshairs of popular fears. On June 18, 1982, a body was found hanging beneath the bridge. The victim was Roberto Calvi, a 62-year-old Italian banker. On his body was a fake passport and $15,000 cash. His pockets were stuffed with bricks. It appeared to be a murder, staged to send a message. But from whom? Some believe it was the Mafia. Others suggest the symbolism was Masonic. The bricks in the pockets suggested stonemasons. The bridge where the body was found is close to the Masonic Grand Lodge of London. And even its name, Blackfriar, was the nickname for a secretive group to which Roberto Calvi belonged. An outlawed organization called Propaganda Due, or P2, and P2 had been a lodge of the Freemasons. 
British journalist Rupert Cornwell was in Rome back then, working for the Financial Times. I am Rupert Cornwell, and I am not a Freemason. When Calvi was discovered, the reaction was just amazement. The circumstances of the death were just, just people could not believe it. Roberto Calvi had risen through the ranks of Italy's banking industry to become chairman of Banco Ambrosiano, one of Italy's largest private banks. With ties to the Vatican that earned Calvi the nickname, God's Banker. But weeks before his death, Calvi had appeared in court about the disappearance of $1.4 billion from his bank. My name is Conrad Garinger, and I am not a Freemason. Basically, what was going on was vast amounts of money were being laundered through Banco Ambrosiano, shipped overseas to Latin America and, and other offshore banking points, and then disappearing. Within days of the discovery of Calvi's body, British police ruled the death a suicide, a finding many thought to be a cover-up. The circumstances, are, of course, were quite bizarre. Would a person commit suicide by hanging themselves when he had to walk down quite a complicated set of steps and then climb out onto the scaffolding to do this? Later inquiries showed the injuries to his neck were inconsistent with hanging and that he hadn't touched the bricks in his pockets. And at the time of death, the point on the bridge where the rope was tied could be reached by someone standing in a boat. Rupert Cornwell personally met with Calvi two months before his death. He looked like a man who was under extreme pressure. This was a man who was frightened, who was hunted, and who was, I think, aware that the end probably wasn't that far off. Calvi was reputedly a member of the P2 Lodge. I'm John Hamill, and I'm a Freemason. P2 was a lodger under the Grand Orient of Italy. It was taken over by a man called Licio Gelli, who suddenly began to run the proper lodge, which was regularly registered as it had to be under Italian law. But he was also behind it, running a clandestine lodge. P2 was established in 1877, and it was a very traditional Italian Freemason lodge. However, in the 1960s, it was taken over by Gelli, and when Gele infiltrated the organization, it became a Freemason lodge with an agenda. Roberto Calvi was Catholic, and the church has long denounced Freemasonry. So why would he become a member of the P2 Lodge? I suspect that Calvi was attracted to P2 because it offered him business opportunities, because it satisfied his interest in the idea of hidden power. His son, Carlo, was 28 at the time of his father's death. My father did not entirely participate in these things because of his own free choice. What happens is the, the bank had grown 